Okay, I'll call this meeting together at 534 this evening. Thank you all for being here. Um, appointments, uh, I think we will um, uh, make a, a, an appointment for Jonathan to be stepping up to uh, full status, however that's referred to. And do we need to make a motion for that, Ty? Um, no, you can just seat him as a regular member. Okay, Jonathan, you're a regular member. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the reading and approvals of minutes of last month. It was brought to my attention, even though it's re read properly, that we unanimous unanimously approved the application 1623 for the solar panels on top of Paul's house. Um, when we did it on the video, it did not come through. So uh, I just need to amend the minutes that we did indeed unanimously approve that um, application. And Ty, one more thing, the best way to do that, do we re-ask for the approval or do we just go ahead and state now that, that we did have a unanimous acceptance of that? So I, I had added that to the agenda under 6B was the ratification of the motion um, for 15-23. And at that point, I was hoping that you would just, you know, do pretty much what you're doing now is kind of confirm that, that we read that motion and say that all was in favor. So um, like you said, right now, I think you're just looking at the minutes and the third and the 30th. So if you want to approve those, that's fine. And then we'll move on to the end and you can ratify that motion. Um, okay. According to my agenda, I don't see it here, but that sounds good. So we can go ahead and ask for a, an in favor of approval of that, correct? Right now. Or do like right do now you need to um, look for a motion to approve the minutes of October 3rd and October 13th or October 30th meetings. Oh, I see. That's right. Third. I'm sorry. All right. So you're right. So um, the first apologies is to accept and approve the minutes of October 3rd of 2023 first. I move to approve them. Um, second that motion. Second from Jonathan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have unanimous. Great. And then 3B, um, the special minutes here of uh, Ty, repeat what we have to do. We have to officially redo just, it. Nope, just for this one, you want to make a motion to approve the minutes of October 30th, 2023. With the ex with the verbal acceptance of the approval of them. So I, like I said, I, I, I think maybe you only printed the front page of the agenda, the second page of the agenda under other business is 6B, which is the ratification of the motion for application 15-23. So um, I think that what they're looking for is just that, uh, you know, a confirmation that that motion happened and that everybody was in favor of that approval that happened at the last meeting. So right now you're just looking to approve your October 30th, 2000. 23 minutes okay but if we if we approve the minutes we are making the decision uh final so to speak we're confirming our decision in the minutes it's written as if it was a unanimous approval yes right. so if you're not if you don't feel that was a unanimous unanimous approval then don't approve the minutes it oh, was no, I do. i'm just i'm a little confused as to whether we're um, doing a second approval, when if we approve the minutes, we don't, we don't, we shouldn't have to do that, unless there's some reason we have to jibe with the video. <laughs> Are you well, opposed to sorry, doing that? It, isn't the written? Are the minutes a written record of what was done in the meeting? So yes. it was in the, but the video on the video, we we made the motion, we seconded it, but apparently we did not officially say all 
you know, all those in favor. And it was, you know, as a legal documentation, it was caught and we just need to correct that. So, I mean, if you're not a opposed to ratifying that motion, if everybody's in agreement that that was approved, yes. then I, I, I don't think any harm would be done in ratifying that motion as well, just to satisfy everybody's concerns. All right. Is that? So we make a motion to ratify. Under but six later, under six B meeting. Under six is no six B. You're on, you're, you have to page down to the second page of the agenda. I am on the second page. I see a four. I don't see a, a six. So, um, so you what you're suggesting is we wait until all the applications are done and then do it then to, to follow the the legality of it. Or you can move this up on the agenda if you want, but um, I don't think it, it needs to be. I think we can take care of the business that's before you and then deal with the house cleaning later. Okay, all right. So we'll just put that back on pause. Thanks. Um, so the first application, hold on one second. Well, we have to approve the minutes for October 30th. Yes, uh, but we can't officially approve the minutes for October 30th if there's a glitch in the minutes. That's that's what I thought was the sticking point here. So do you if, feel like the minutes are incorrect? According, if the minutes don't reflect what the video does, then the minutes are incorrect. So we need to modify the minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we make a motion to uh, state that the minutes did not reflect the unanimous, the video did not respect the, the unanimous decision of the board or that were. You're saying that, that the minutes. Legally, what's the best way you want this done? That's I. That's what I need to know. Okay, you're gonna make a motion. Somebody's gonna make a motion and somebody's gonna second to approve the minutes as amended. Your amendment is going to be that the minutes reflected a unanimous opinion that was not reflected in the video. Okay. Jonathan, would you like to word that properly? You're I so good try. at it. <laughs> I'll make a you motion could... to approve the special meeting minutes of October 30th with the amendment that we are confirming the unanimous vote to approve the application. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you, I, I let me let me give it a try. You try it, Joanne. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna make a motion to accept the minutes of the special meeting of October 30th with the amendment that the minutes do not line up with the video concerning something. <laughs> concerning application 15 23 yeah, there we and go. its unanimous approval. Yes, ratification for the motive or um, for application 1523 and unanimous approval does not show up on the video. It's six, I think it's 1623, but yes. Okay. Um, how's that sound? I think you're, you're, you've got a lot of words out there. I think you've All right. touched, on it, touched on it somewhere. It. <laughs> you need a second. I'll, I'll second, second the motion. And you need and to all those in favor as loudly as you can. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yes. All right. All right. We're moving on. My apologies to you, to the other two of you for going through our little cleanup here. Um, now we're moving uh, da, 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 to application uh, 1723, Alyssa and George, uh, their new project, the project of the renovation on their building on Main Street. Alyssa, would you like to go ahead and... Sure. We were here last month with Scott, or two months ago with Scott, and I happened to be driving down Route 7 and drove by Mountainside, um, the other high watch facility north of us, and I saw along the roadside that they had a berm that they had landscaped, and I thought, you know, and so that sort of is gnawing at me, you know, sticking in my head, and then as the contractor is excavating the property, he said, you know, we're going to haul away all the dirt. And I said, well, hold that thought, you know, let me see if we can redo this landscaping here. And only because all the trees are gone, the fence is gone. And it's like, 
we're in a fishbowl. And I thought if we could somewhat landscape it and I sent in, I mean, on the last application, we needed to show you like the native plants. It's all native plants. And it's just gonna have a slight like three foot slope to it, I'm thinking, just to plant it so that it just sort of, it's going to be a kidney shape. The, the drawing, I sent the drawings in to all of you, so you should have them. And then a picture of, of sort of what the berm looks like up at mountainside. So I just thought, you know, just to soften it a little bit, instead of possibly putting a fence out there and making it be, you know, I don't know, ch just changing it slightly. So I thought a berm would be perhaps a nicer solution to a fence. And then it would also be landscaped with the native plant list that we, that I submitted. And that's kind of it. Um, do you have any photos of, of what the property look, looks like now with your renovation in progress? You mentioned that um, there's some. I didn't send one what it looks like right now. It's a big, huge pile of five feet of dirt at the end of my driveway, at the end of our property line. So I did not include that, sorry. But I just had him leave it. And the man who's doing the excavating is the same guy who did the mountainside property. And when I mentioned it to him, he said, oh yeah, I can do that. I did mountainside. And it's just, if you look at what mountainside did, it's just kind of sloping. It's got some grass, you know, there's grass along the roadside and then just some low plants and then some trees on it. But it just gives it a little bit more protection from Route 7. And being on Route 7, the lights coming out of the green and the motorcycles, I thought, you know, that would be, a, a hopefully a reasonable solution to the problem. I mean, the property used to be planted all with hemlocks, which everybody all hated. So I thought this would be, you know, possibly a better solution. Mm -hmm. I, um, I have a question. question. Um, go ahead, Joanne. Oh yeah, how, from the drawing, it looks like it's really right, like right on the road. Is it's that- not. It's not, it's gonna be okay. about four feet from the road. And it's going to be flat and then it's going to, the berm is going to go up. It's not going to be, trust me, it's not going to be right on the road because the everything would get, you know, you'd have to wash. deal with salt and everything. Right, right. And also just wash. I mean, this, the roadside part is, the slope on the roadside is going to be grass. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be, you know, planted, you know, it's going to be, I don't know, I thought he, you know, tried to depict it, you know, sort of made it a kidney shape and sort of encompass the front part of the property there. Um, and Alyssa, just a question I had, the, yeah. you have three to four feet of a slope. Did you discuss with him in terms of, you know, trying to cut down the noise and the headlights coming out? Um, is there a height that is specifically really good um, that, you know, definitely cuts down with noise pollution? Obviously, four feet is going to well, help. With I mean, three to four what, feet. What, at what point did you define the height of it? I you think know, it's the, like three to four feet, Ellen. I mean, it's not, it's probably, it, I'm not sure. I didn't, you know, George took the pictures of mountainside the other day to send yeah. you. And I'm not, I mean, it's not like it's a five foot berm. It's like, it's kind of just gently sloping, but I just thought if we could plant it with some trees, you know, have some lower shrubs in the beginning and then some trees on either side of it. There's, he put in a sassafras and some holly and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and, um, hemlock to just sort of screen it off and then have some low, low plants in between as well. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. And um, the drawings. It's like, I think it's like three to four feet. It's not going to be five or six feet. It's going to be like three to four feet. Right. In terms of noise pollution is the question like this guy. Who oh, I don't know. Do it. That I don't know. OK, so if you all of a sudden found out that it, in order to cut down the motorcycle noise, it had to be six feet. Would you say we'll live with the noise of the motorcycle rather than having some, you know, a six foot berm in front of the house? I like the are, are where do the aesthetics come in in terms of the noise is, you know, for what I, you're to accomplish? I don't think it needs to be six feet. I mean, I think then once you plant plants on top of six feet, it's going to be like crazy. So I'm thinking, Correct. so I'm thinking if it's like the three to four, you know, cause if you have three to four feet and then you plant plants on top of it, you're going to get a little bit more height there. And that, that should deflect the noise. I think, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, just, it's got a few lower shrubs in there as well. It'll help block right. some of that noise. I mean, if you're planning, 
plants like a you know hydrangeas and things like that tend to be like three to four feet tall think you know some things in that range and then the taller ones are going to be on either on either side of the driveway and then you know i i don't think he has anything tall in the middle i mean nothing like hemlock or pine trees are in the middle of it but it's you know it's sort of landscaped out in a kidney shape I have I have to say I I really like the the native plants you know not the the very regular hedging and things like that I I really you know I think I think that's great um I guess my one concern is just that you know on the street everything's so flat it's you know it's in town still and everything's so flat and I'm, I just, you know, I'm having trouble like wrapping my head around how it'll transition into being this berm. Well, it's going to be um, gradual, Joanne. It's not going to be, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to be sloping. So it's just going to be, I mean, it's not going to be huge. Let's put it that way. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, three feet tall by, you know, 20 feet wide. I mean, it's gonna, It's not that deep you know, because the driveway cuts in on it as well. So it's just to cover the, it, it, to sort of protect the edge of the driveway from the side of the, the addition. I mean, if we don't do the berm, it was going to be, it's just going to be low planted shrubs and stuff like that. But this way it would just give it a little protection from salt and noise and that's all. Yeah. Hi, Ty, what do our, um, what, what does our jurisdiction say about like raised plantings or any sort of like modification to like the topography of, of so the So in general, you have jurisdiction over landscaping. So that includes kind of everything, you know, berms and trees and plants, um, you know, the overall landscaping of a property. And what you're looking at is generally is it in keeping with the village center, you know, um, character. Yeah, and I think that's kind of also what I'm thinking too is that you know if if we start going with berms, other people are going to do berms for privacy or or whatever. Um, you know, how do we feel about that? Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily against it. I just I just thought it would be I mean, a nice addition. A hard, you know, yeah, I just thought I'm just the one up at mountainside is so gently sloping that it wasn't meant to be like a mountain of dirt with trees on top. Okay. It's, it's right. supposed to be the <laughs> gentle sloping onto the property. It's not meant to freak out the middle of town. Believe me, I, I live in the middle of town. Yeah. I've lived here for <laughs> 47 years. I get it, you know, but we've had, we used to have all those hemlocks in front that everybody hated, but they were such great privacy. So right. I'm just trying to somewhat create it and trying to do brand new like native plants and just sort mm -hmm. of sense it off a little bit differently that's all yeah yeah and I understand about the privacy I live on route seven too <laughs> exactly you know you know that deal yeah um I you know I just want to make sure that we're talking we're talking about the small brown house next to the yellow Victorian right and the air and the area in front of that right because mm -hmm. I'm looking on google maps if you look, if you, if you were at Sophie's Bakery and you looked across the street, that's where we are. Right. So I see the fence that you mentioned and, you know, the curve of the driveway. I think I, I really like the idea of like taking whatever excavating dirt that you have and kind of like filling it locally rather than having to pay for it to be dumped. And I think it's important to have native planting. I guess my only concern is that we don't really know what you're like, what, what you'll do relative to actually what actually gets done. So, you know, I know you're not going to do anything that's crazy or too big, but that's not actually shown. I promise you. I, 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 in my opinion is that it's like almost like too open-ended to just be like, you can do that. And then if it's something that, you know, is not to everybody's liking, then it's done and we've approved it. And then it sets a precedent for anybody else. You know, essentially the minimum requirements are minimum for anybody else in the future doing any sort of berm who might not have the same sensitivity that you do. That is my well, comment. 
as you all, you know, decided on the last meeting to make sure they were native plants, you would have that same jurisdiction over someone else doing the, a similar design. Mm -hmm. I hundred mean, percent. I totally you know, agree with you. Right. The, I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, warm it up. And so instead of, it's just a, a garden at the end and, you know, I just thought it would just create just some sort of privacy instead of putting a fence. I just thought it would be a bit warmer than a fence. That's I'm, I, I, my, I don't think that you're, that it's, going to be any like I, I don't disagree with you that the privacy is good and it'll warm it up and create some interest but you know in terms of protecting the view corridor and like the appeal like what the town is supposed to look like in our like essentially what our position is on the architectural review board to uphold that there's just not enough information on what you're proposing to do that doesn't that then that let's say you did build something that's higher than is necessary or not doesn't you know there's just not enough information in here to for my for me to be like okay yes go ahead and do it and then we don't know what's actually done and then it, it was approved based on this and you know the details are not there so that's my that's my comment i like the idea of doing it i understand why you want to do it i bet it's better than you know any hemlocks that used to be there or certain or the fence or whatever but mm -hmm. i just i feel like it's not not, not specific enough for us to approve so if I, when I hear everybody like say, what, we, what else do you need? Let me just, um, excuse me, Alyssa, specific. but I hear everybody saying is that they're really, we're supportive without a doubt of what, aesthetically what uh, George and Alyssa are trying to do and understand what their needs are in terms of giving themselves some privacy. But we need to have the design uh, a little more fleshed out, perhaps, you know, is What's three the maximum height? You right. Know, where, is three what's feet the slope? really going to, like with three or four feet, is it really going to solve the problem? And maybe no. would two feet solve it just as well? well I, no, I don't even care if it's two feet versus three feet versus four feet. It could be whatever feet are sufficient to meet their needs. But I think that whatever the intention is needs to be a little bit more clarified so that we're not, we're not all assuming it's going to be three feet or four feet. And then it ends up being six feet or eight feet. And it's like, okay, well, that is not it, you know it wasn't specified in what we approve we're approving this the landscape drawing that doesn't show what the heights or what the slopes I, are going to be i was going to say that's my i mean what what would help too would be an elevation drawing from yeah. the street you know kind of showing the house behind the berm um i i think you know and thank you for sending the pictures I think they really help to understand I don't know Alyssa do you know how high the berm is in the photos the high watch one I mean I imagine it's like three feet yeah because I mean to me that looks I mean that's all I mean we're pretty... I'm just looking at three feet I'm not looking at building you know Mount Everest in the front of my driveway okay right I just but want to make it slightly sloping so that when you plant it it's got some height to it that's all that's all yeah. I'm looking to do. I'm not trying to make it be complicated or, you know, you know, do anything that would be disrespectful to Kent. I mean, I mean, you see what I do in front of the restaurant. I am very sensitive to what goes on in town. I mean, I've never, you know, I mean, this would be say, certainly in keeping with what I do all the time. That's all, you know, and just trying to, you know, landscape it out a little bit differently. I just, I mean, I came up with the idea. I thought, what a great idea. This could work, you know, just to, you know, all that dirt's there, just sort of, you know, round it out. Cause I thought right now is the best time to plant because I wanted to get some of the trees in with it being winter because the soil's still warm. So that was the whole point instead of waiting till spring to plant this whole thing. So that's kind of where, how it, the urgency of it came up so quickly, that's all. And so a friend of mine who does architectural design designed out the plan quickly so that to give a you know give you an idea of what we want to do and if you need more detail I can get more detail you know if that's what it requires I mean I just I I don't know I mean I just would never do anything to make it be ridiculous in town you have to I mean you have to know me all better than that for sure but but it's up to you obviously would the board feel more comfortable if there was a little more information about what this looks like from the road? And um, if if that works, we are very comfortable having us pulling a special meeting together so that this can be done more quickly. 
um, you know, if you already have the dirt that's piled up where it's going to be, you know, we can do a drive by, check it out, uh, and then or, put yeah, or a photo or a photo of the dirt in place or whatever yeah. it is. I'm, oh, I agree. Right, the dirt that's in place right now is way too tall. Okay, just so you know, they they, they because we're pouring a foundation, it's all heaped at the end of the driveway, so it's like five and six feet tall. That is not how tall this is going to be. Okay, I just. I must yep. have okay. by. I just want to make that clear that okay. that's not the height of <laughs> it, sure. okay? Just so you know. But it's gonna be like, you know, I you know, three feet tall, just so it has some sort of a some little depth to it so that when you plant it, the you know, the trees are on, you know, a couple of tall trees and some shrubs in there. So it just sort of blocks it out a little bit. So as you come out of the green, you're not like looking right into the house. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, I think it would be helpful to have more detailed drawings or pictures or something so that we uh, can form a better judgment of its impact because that part of Main Street is very flat. So we would be introducing something new. Um, and I think we have to be uh, comfortable with that because we're going to set a precedent. Okay. Okay. And keeping in mind, of course, like as Alyssa says, George and Alyssa have always, their taste is incredible and wonderful. So, you know, we know that whatever they do with this space is going to be lovely. Um, but perhaps then we should, we make a motion to table this until we get a little bit more information and are happy to hold a special meeting um, to to move it along so you don't lose any time on this. Okay. Is that well, so I will everybody? I yeah. will have him redraw the drawings and and specify it a little bit better. And I'm sure he can come up with a drawing that show like the height of it from the roadside too. Make right. It I was going to say to me, I, I'd love to see like an elevation drawing, you know, showing the berm and the house behind it. And then also the transition on the ends of the berm, you know, because like Jonathan said, it is so flat there. It's not you know, you're really talking about like four sides if it was rectangular. So how is it going to transition at the ends? I know well, it's, it's kidney shaped, so it will it won't have like it's not going to be just like a, you know, a mound. Right. It's going to be curved around the entryway there. Yeah. All right. So I will we'll go know. back to the drawing board. Sounds good. Cool. OK. All right. Thanks. Thank you. So uh, do do we have, as soon as I get the information, I'll send it off to Ty, and then you can let me know if you want to have a special meeting or wait mm -hmm. another month. Okay. No, no, we're happy. We're happy yeah, we'll to do a okay. special meeting because it's just like we know that time is important for you, especially. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. We're on it. So, um, table it. We don't make a mo we make a motion to table, correct? So I would make a motion to table uh, the application seventeen twenty three uh, to get more information. I'll second. All those in favor, say it nice and loud. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Alyssa. You guys. Thank Thanks. you. Great. Okay. Uh, next application, 1823, John Degnan. That's me. Did, I hope I pronounced it properly. Uh, good. Uh, 13 Lane Street, uh, Skylights. Right. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and... Ex I'm in the process of renovating the rear building on the property in the package that I sent you. I, there's a photo from Lane Street back to the property to towards the rear of the property. It's pretty difficult to see without zooming in on the photo, but we're talking about the structure that's to the right of the garage immediately in front of the school facility behind our property. So it's a one story. There's a an elevation that shows the height of the lower portion of the roof and the height of the upper portion of the roof going from eight to 14 feet. There's also a couple of photos that I showed you from the interior where the last iteration of the roofing, they removed these skylights in this location. Mm. So the, the building um, is kind of like a work of art. 
it has required a great deal of patience and cleaning and effort and fortitude. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure the last time I spoke to you guys was February of 22, just prior to purchasing this property. And um, if you talk to any of our friends and neighbors, you'll understand that we are um, happy to be here and we acknowledge and look for input. And um, that's about it. If you have any mm -hmm. questions, I'd be happy to answer them. This is the old Roadkill Press building, correct? Um, I'm not sure about World Cup Press. The last use was a woodworking shop. Okay. Yeah. Road, actually, it was called Roadkill. R-O-A-D. Roadkill. Road, road Roadkill yeah. Press. Yeah. <laughs> it was a cooperative. It was fabulous. It was a, a, an artist cooperative. So it, the building has great uh, energy and history to it that way. Well, I, I cut my teeth uh, making art in Long Island City. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had a studio in Long Island City before Long Island City was Long Island City. And um, this building brings me right back to my youth. And oh. um, we're very pleased to be here. Lovely. So, so which building? I'm looking at the photograph right now. and You see a big garage in the back of the building on the left side there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the right of it. Okay. One, the, the garage is two stories. The building in question that we want to put the skylights on is the lower building to the I, right. Yeah, you have to zoom in. And then there's the Kent School building behind it that you see. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand now. Right. Can you see the skylights in the photo? Because I'm also looking on Google Maps again, and I'm trying to orient myself. Is the is the building currently like a painted a dark green with a garage style like door with glass panes? Or is that, I, I believe that's the one that we're looking at. Again, there's um, the rear building on the property consists of a large garage, a two-story garage that is on the left side of the photograph. And immediately to the right side of that garage, there's a lower portion of the building, a separate building that um, uh, is in the forefront of the school building behind it. Yeah. It's quite right. small. It's it's just like impossible to tell with all these four buildings are like overlapped in the in the photo that's on here. So it's, it's actually the roof is all we can see. But that's the, but that's the view from the street. Right, exactly. Right. So if because of that, then yeah. yeah. Like, so that what you're looking at from the street is the north side of mm -hmm. the roof. And um, I show three 21 by 48 skylights on the north side. And the idea is that I could vent the entire space from um, these three skylights um, on the north side. The south side considerations can't be seen from anybody's private property. Um, it, uh, I guess if you tried, you could see it from the parking lot uh, of, um, of the, uh, uh, the, the business condo in front of Main Street there and, and the school building. So you're rep proposing to replace the existing skylights with new skylights? Um, yeah, I'm, under a separate permit, I'm replacing the roof. And um, when I told my wife that uh, I got the permit for the roof, she said, what about the skylights? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, just so, to, that, so that's why I'm talking to you. So today. here you are. <laughs> so just to clarify for everybody, the skylights were removed. And now he's looking to put them back. So the mm -hmm. existing roof right now doesn't have them. He showed you the picture of the interior where it shows that there was a history of them being there before. Mm -hmm. Well, I to me, it looks fine. Looks great. Yeah. I'm all yeah. for it. Lovely. And it's lovely to like for you to take that building and bring it back to wow. uh, use. So it's, it's really lovely, John. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a, uh, a labor of love, but uh, <laughs> every day is a surprise and uh, uh, it never disappoints <laughs> from a work point of view. <laughs> right, right. All right. Any other comments or questions? Would someone like to make a motion? I'll um, make a motion to pass or to accept the application. Okay, so it's ap application 1823 uh, to... Um, put in the skylights and I will second it. 
All, All those in favor, nice and loud. Aye. 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 All right. Great. Thank you. Good luck with that project, John. Thanks, Sam. Before you go, um, uh, within the year, I'm sure I'll be coming back to you with uh, plans and elevations for the siding. So I uh, look forward to that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Right. Thanks. <clears throat> Um, okay, we've already taken care of Paul, and I think we're good, right? Well, we have to do calendar approval. Oh, yes, calendar approval, right. Everything was, my apologies, we were switched. Let me get that. Uh, the meetings were switched to Mondays at 5.30. Okay, great. I missed Everybody that. So starting when? January 8th. There's a list of them in the documents that you can see all the dates, Jessica. Oh, okay. There is in the in the Google on Google Drive. Right. Okay, got it. Six A regular meeting schedule. Fantastic. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I make a motion to accept. I'll I'll second. Second. <laughs> everybody seconds. So that's a unanimous approval by everybody. Video. Yeah. And then the, I, the the document's not loading, so I'll just, oh yeah, so then what are we doing then for the days, the Mondays that we have holidays? Um, they're on the schedule, there are two of them, one in October and one in November, I okay, think. Okay, fine. Yeah, Ty's figured it all out. And to the first Monday okay. of the month instead. Okay, good. Yeah. Because nobody just, wants to meet, nobody wants to do this on Labor Day. No. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so, okay. so when you... You didn't call the vote. You you said it was unanimous, but Ellen, you should probably just call the vote. I'm sorry. I, I don't want anybody complaining to me. <laughs> I am not cut out for this position, and I <laughs> very clear after ten years, I still haven't gotten it. So, um, so I make a motion to accept the 2024 meeting schedule as printed. Second. I'll second. Oh. Jessica, it was seconded by Jessica. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Everybody's unanimous. All right. Four. Four votes. Four. <laughs> right, Ty? Got it. Got okay. it. Perfect. So now um, the 6B that I was talking there's about. There's 6B. Okay. So to try to make this easy for everybody, um, Basically, just all we have to do here is, you know, acknowledge that, um, you know, on October 30th, uh, this motion was made and seconded and call the vote and confirm that everybody is in favor of this approval. So if we could kind of just go through that again, that would be well, could what I they just need. Just ask for a clarification. Sure. Because I think the motion's been called two different things. Are we uh, ratifying the motion that was, or the application from West Wyrick for the gas station, or are we doing the one for the solar panels? Because the agenda says the West Wyrick one, but I think someone said earlier it was the solar panel one. So I just yeah. want to make sure. So Correct. I noticed that Al, you Al, you got inf different information than I did. I did. I talked to Darlene, but since this is on our business, uh, let's go with this. You know, this. I don't know. I mean, I'm now I'm concerned because I I I also talked to Darlene. <laughs> I, I felt like I understood it differently. So it could be, well, could could we to simplify things? Could we? Add to the agenda and ratify both applications. The votes for both applications. No. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, Jonathan. Since that was your little brainstorm, no, you again. can word this, baby. Uh, I'll make a motion to add to the agenda ratification of application fifteen twenty three and the application for solar panels. I don't know the number off the 15, top of my head. Sixteen twenty three. Sixteen twenty three. Okay. That, and that's Rat good. Ratification for both. You've okay. ratified that everybody unanimous, unanimously approved 
both applications. Oh, well, first we have to add it to the agenda that we're doing both as we're changing the agenda. Right. So the I motion second, would be to I ratify, re-ratify yeah. both application 1523 and 1623 so that they uh, mesh with the video or clarify second, the video. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Jessica? I can't say yes because I don't. I wasn't there and you I were, have no right. idea what's going on. Okay. Um, now, Jonathan, you can actually, we can make well, the- I, I would yeah. make a motion to uh, ratify uh, application 1523 and uh, 1623 to um, bring the minutes and the video into sync. Does that sound right? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. How's that sound, Ty? Good? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I, I know, I'm I confident that everybody was in favor. So I think that's what they were looking for was just somebody to confirm that. Well, it's nice to know that these videos are watched closely by that's some sure. paying attention. <laughs> it made me think about whether I should like comb my hair and do stuff like that. <laughs> I'm going to go with a new outfit for the next one. So, so but we appreciate it. We, you know, next time we could do it like as a musical number, maybe <laughs> that'll go over really well. Okay. So All right. I have a question. Yes. Um, do we like, I know some commissions go into like executive session where it's not open to the public. There's specific reasons for that. I mean, I, um, it's usually uh, legal you know, related, you know, some okay. kind of lawsuit or it would be like a personnel matter or something like that. But okay. um, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Do we have guidelines on what like minimum requirements need to be submitted for these things, for these applications? Yeah. We do have guidelines. Right. Are so they think, upheld very well? No. I think, I don't think that we should accept, like, I think that if like a minimum needs to be photos of the property from the road. Mm -hmm and any angles that are like affected right so like if it like I, I think that it's like for me like okay I don't live on main street I didn't drive there this week I didn't notice there's a huge pile of dirt like I don't I didn't it's hard for me to understand what exactly was being proposed mm -hmm. and where it was relative to and then the same thing with this skylight one I feel like I feel like they need to have photos from the street view for all applications okay. was that possible of course. Yes. Yeah. So we can't, you know, we've, we have always run f fairly loosely because, you know, it's, we are such a gray area board and we know everybody, you know, so it's always been a little, we get too casual and, and that's obviously we get into trouble, especially by my guidance. So um, if you, if we want to maybe Ty, we can say the, the way the, um, applications are laid out they have to just be followed to the law and if they're not we just shouldn't they can't come in front of us um, rather than having so, someone show up and say you know what the application's not good enough for so, us to make a decision the rules about accepting applications is that you you can't tell not somebody you, you can't not accept them you can ask for more information you can deny for lack of information that's what but i'm saying in the office i can't say no i won't accept that everybody has a right to be heard and explain why they wouldn't be able to provide pictures or something there may be more details so you can't right. just cut somebody off and mm -hmm. not give them the opportunity to talk to you guys oh, so no, um, that, but when you know if there's a checklist of seven things that you have to have in your application. If someone shows up with only five of them, I can't not accept that. Oh, you can't. I have to. I can't. Yeah. I have to accept that because the case law has shown that sometimes people have reasons why they can't provide that information, and without okay. that opportunity to explain it to you, um, and just to reject an application is unfair to an applicant. So. That's what I've been guided by, you know, the town attorney and different resources. Um, so, it, it, but ap you're absolutely right. If you don't feel comfortable with the information that you've been provided, then you can ask for more information or you can deny for lack of information. And again, I'm on board with you. I will make sure that I try to get as much information as I can, but 
if I can't get it, then it still has to come forward. All right. And I mean, then simple, simple if, process. I'm sorry, Jess, go ahead. So no. So, so like, what if we review the documents in advance of the meeting and see that there's no like photo, for example, can we, can we request that before the meeting? Yeah. And I will try to do that as well before you even have to do that. But I just wanted to make it clear that sometimes applications are going to come to you without, without every. Photos. Yeah. I, I was going to say, actually, when I spoke, I spoke to Alyssa when I went to the Fife and Drum and she brought up this application and I just said, you should send in photographs <laughs> like you know, anymore because I had already looked at it and it was just the drawing and I was just like. And no, are we even allowed to have that kind I was, of conversation? Are you even I was just going to gonna mention that on, on that matter, you sh usually huh. try to avoid, I mean, I know it's a small town and yeah. everybody's friends, but best case scenario is just to try to say, well, we need to talk to that about that as a group or something like that and avoid those conversations because they. Could yeah. Get well, she actually didn't know I was on it when she, oh. it. she was <laughs> okay. just talking about it. And so <laughs> about it happens. It does. It's very it. hard then, in little towns like this. Yeah. And then I just said, you know, you should try to send in photos. So I, I have one question. Ty, doesn't the application at the bottom have a list of things that are required? It does, yes. So if a lawyer is saying you have to accept uh, incomplete applications, should those be there? I'm kind of well, confused I guess, how I they guess, can... I guess if the if application is incomplete, we can always be like, your application is incomplete. We're not going to, you know, like spend time on your application in theory, right? And then it just, that exactly. person gets delayed a month for submitting an incomplete application. Mm -hmm. But isn't that the same as rejecting the application if it's incomplete? But at least it gets, it gets the applicant, the intent is to get give the applicant the opportunity the to speak to you. I can't be like the, you know, the gatekeeper yeah. and say, you can't speak to the board because, you know, there may be, there may be a reason, you know, you just never know. And I think that's what the case law showed in a particular case. I could probably find it for you that, you know, an applicant was denied the opportunity to go before um, a board and they had good reason why they couldn't provide all the information and was never able to um, speak to that. So, Mm -hmm. You know, again, you, it's, it's going to be the same result. You you can absolutely say I need more information or I deny it for lack of information, however you want to handle. I think he handled it very well this evening, um, you know, just tabling it and waiting for the applicant to provide. Mm -hmm. the information that I mean, it certainly sets up a situation of frustration because I know right. in anybody's case, if I knew before the meeting that I needed more, more information, I would go back and get it so that I wouldn't have to go through this process a second time. So I think we're creating uh, we're creating an unpleasant. So like, by but if the documents if the documents are on the application, all the applicant yeah. has to do is read the application and be you know submit a right. complete application. Yeah, we originally right. when we put the application together, there was actually a cover letter with a checklist. There's you know, still, it's yes. still there. So if yeah. you I mean if you were to say to someone, oh I see you only did five of seven of these. Are you sure you want to uh, submit this? Are you able to ask that question legally? Yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. So say, are you know, knowing that you don't have it complete, are you sure you want to do this? And maybe that way we're setting someone up to say you may be in a situation where your application is incomplete, rather than them being feeling like they got snowballed if they get this far. Well, didn't didn't that happen with the solar panels? Right. They they would yes. do it because they didn't have all the information. They withdrew right. it. So that that was mm -hmm. a, a perfect scenario where I had said to them, you know, you need this, this, and this. This is what I think that the commission would like or the board would like to see. And he wasn't able to get that in time. So we withdrew it and came back when he was able to get that. You know, so um I think what I'm hearing from you guys is that you want strict adherence to what the application requirements are. So um, I will go over it with all the applicants and make sure that they understand that and then it's at their own risk if they come forward with missing information. Well, as, as long as you're comfortable, because I don't, I can't speak for everybody else, but you were right earlier when you said you don't want to be the gatekeeper. I don't mm -hmm. think the onus of 
for lack of a better word, pissing them off should fall with you. No, I don't mind um, pissing them off. <laughs> that's not that's not what I was trying to say. I, I'm saying the gatekeeper from keeping them to sit, from talking with you. Yeah. You know, so they will come forward with or without all the information, but they'll know what's expected. Right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. and and I know. think in okay. light of the, the conversation that we had with Paul about you know really putting the, you know, everything being so properly done legally that we also have to expect to be able to work with an application who is also done to the to proper specifications. You know, because if, if we're not, you know, if we start bending the rules mm -hmm. and they start bending the rules before you know it, the rules are all bent and we can't be legally accountable for anything. Well, I also, I, I mean, I find it difficult. I'm I'm pretty new here, so I don't know everybody. But you know, you hear people saying like, "Oh, you can trust me. I've lived here a long time. I've always done things well." And you know, that's where I'm just like, I, I don't know that really. <laughs> and <laughs> and we that have, was, that you know, was we kind of a little own... unfair thing to say, I thought. Yeah. It's but a, we've we had that, in our own very recent we've experience. had that several times you right. know, where where people are like trust me I've always done this and I'm like but I'm new I don't know <laughs> right and and the thing to remember is that applications are not owner specific they're property specific it's I mean these properties can transfer to anybody at a drop of a dime so right. the expectations are held up for the future owners as well of what you've approved so mm -hmm. um you know you could be with a, a wonderful person who's done wonderful work and they can sell their property to somebody else and you know so it, it's about the it's about the property and not about the owner that's a good so, way to. So those approvals are 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 um, transferable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If somebody cuts down a tree that's you know precious to the village center, there it doesn't matter who put the tree there. That tree is important to the character of the the town itself. So there was an instance like that where I think they did have to come back to you and say, "Sorry, we had to cut down this tree, and it's an after the fact, and now we got to make it right." So, um, no, I guess my question is like, let's say applicant, you know, Jane Jane Smith is like proposes to do something, gets approval from us and from the town to do it, and then sells the property before the work is executed. Does that approval then go to the next owner? Yes, yes. So they're expected to do the pro if they care go move forward with the project, they're expected to do it as approved by you guys. Unless it's amended or whatever, right? Right. If they, they have that opportunity to come back, but right. Yeah. That's why it's cr it's critical that like you see what people are planning to do and like mm -hmm. whatever it is, right? Right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Just I'll a, second that. All those in favor? Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. And just a quick reminder, guys, that on uh, next month is the election of chairman. I don't even know if you have a vice chair, but you know your officers. So, um, just something to keep in mind. That's what's coming up next. And, and that's going to happen at the meeting. Huh? That yeah. happens during the meeting. Yep. You you would you know put forth the nomination. You know, second the nomination, and then you know. And I just want to state for the record that I've been uh, chairman for over 10 years, maybe 12 now. I am obviously not the best person for this job. And this is the best board um, in terms of really comprehensive, thoughtful people that we have ever had with the Architectural Review Board. And um, it would be great if someone else wanted to take over that position. Because um, I think I don't think I'm the best person for this job. I never have been. But we we've really done some great stuff. So just put that out there. I would say, Ellen, don't sell yourself short. <laughs> oh, no, like so you're you're doing a fine a, job. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I, I do things too casually. You know, until I realized we were recorded, I used to use the F word all the time. I mean, it's just inappropriate. <laughs> so it's just not, you know, I mean, you, and we are. This is such a you. This is such a great group of people. It's been such a, it's really such a pleasure to see that the ARB has grown into, into this. And it's a sticky, it's really a sticky situation, you know, cause you're dealing with, like you said, I would, we're dealing with our friends and neighbors. And when someone says you trust me, you know, suddenly you, 
you really you're stuck well because... and you want to you want to trust them but then yeah. you also don't want to make bad decisions <laughs> right and we have we all know that in the past as 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 very recently you know it's this group we have gotten to people where we've said trust them and we know in our hearts we don't really trust that you're going to do this after all and you know so you can't you can't base it on that and it is it's hard so but anyway yeah so we'll do that next month we're adjourned all right you're adjourned okay <laughs> bye everybody bye. Bye. Thank, you. thank you thank you